Hi, just recently I've been looking at ways uh, of improving my workflow and my general process um, to get better results from my drone footage. Um, now, I love the footage that you can get from these things, uh, I, I find it excellent to work with, um, but I don't have anywhere near enough time to invest in learning to fly it really well, so I find that the best solution for me uh, is to use an app like Litchi, which I can use the, uh, the pre-programmed missions to fly uh, and get uh, excellent drone footage that way. Just to emphasise this is not going to be a tutorial, um, all the techniques that I use in this video are very well explored and very well covered by a whole range of tutorials that you'll always already find out there and available. Um, so instead this is just going to be an overview uh, of an iterative workflow process um, that I have recently started using, uh, taking me through the flight planning stage, through to the flight mission itself and through to post-production. Um, I myself, I use the DJI Phantom 3 standard um, with Litchi uh, and I use Adobe uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects for post-production. Uh, but as I say, this is really about the workflow itself, so whatever drone you use, whatever software you use, um, hopefully this will still be relevant. So uh, let's jump in and let's start with Litchi Mission Hub. So here we are in the Litchi Mission Hub. Um, now the mission that I'm going to fly here is actually going to be a, a hyperlapse, uh, a time lapse uh, to capture the sunrise coming up. Uh, I'm quite fortunate that I live next to a nice patch of bushland here in Brisbane uh, and at this time of year in, in winter uh, we get some nice sunrises with some nice patchy misty fog over this little patch of bush here. Uh, so that was what my intention was here was to catch that sunrise um, in, in hyperlapse uh, with the fog nice and dramatic. So the first thing that I would do is just roughly work out where it is that I want to fly. Now I want to fly in an arc around this area here looking across to the east. Uh, so what I would do, I'll be starting from over in this area over here so just really quite quickly um, I'd bring my drone out over the trees and then over as quickly as I can to the area where I want to start my hyperlapse from. Not paying too much attention to things like the, the speed between the waypoints and the uh, altitude at this point or the heading uh, or the gimbal pitch. Uh, I'll set that up once I've got uh, an idea of my flight path uh, and I'll also be using another couple of apps. Um, the uh, Virtual Litchi Mission app which is a free app. Uh, I'll post a link to where you can get that from in the description below this video. Uh, and also Google Earth Pro. Uh, another freely downloadable app which um, you, you'll be mostly familiar with I would imagine. Uh, I'll also include the link for that one. Now just jumping ahead real quick into Google Earth Pro. What I like about this as a tool for planning missions is um, just how you can visualize um, an area uh, in 3D before you actually um, plan and, and uh, and work up your mission in the Litchi Mission Hub. Uh, so this is the area that I'm talking about. Um, and additionally, what I, what I like about this is that you can you can even have a little look about at the um, where are we at the the angle of the sun and the direction that the sun's coming from uh, at a particular time of day. So for example, I know that the sunrise is going to be at about 6:30 in the morning. So if we just have a little look at what that looks like at that time of day at 6.30 we can see where it's going to be coming up and we can really sort of scope out this area down in here and see exactly where we want to be positioning the drone, where we want it to be pointing uh, to get the best shot when we actually come to fly the mission. So back in Litchi, um, I've just finished sort of fleshing out where I want my waypoints. I've included the, um, the altitudes, the speed uh, between waypoints. I've added my curves in um, and my bearing and my uh, gimbal pitch. Um, so effectively the drone is just traveling to this point. So um, all of this here is about getting the drone to the starting point. The key part of the mission is this arc here. Um, so as I mentioned, this is gonna be a hyperlapse. So uh, as we get to this point here, we're cruising, we're at 40 meters. Um, 
we come forward a bit further and we drop down, pardon me, back to the first point in the arc here and we've dropped down to two kilometres an hour. We're starting at 15 metres. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit of mist all in this area so that'll look interesting. And um, the camera on the drone is set to time lapse uh, every and take a shot every two seconds. So as it moves slowly around here, it'll take a shot every two seconds, uh, which we will then subsequently bring into After Effects as a JPEG sequence. So just coming around here, we see that the drone is moving nice and slowly as it comes around its arc. Uh, if you just look at the altitude, it's coming up, rising as it comes around to provide a nice interesting angle. So once you've got all that sorted out and you're happy with, uh, of, with how that looks and, you, and with all your headings and what the drone is doing at each point, um, you save your mission and at that point uh, we move across to uh, another app uh, which is, as I mentioned earlier, the Virtual Litchi Mission app and we'll take a look at that now. Okay, so here's uh, the Virtual Litchi Mission app, which is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is free for download, uh, and I'll provide the link below. Um, all you need to do is open up the mission that you just created uh, in the Litchi Mission Hub. Uh, that will bring it into the Virtual Litchi Mission app uh, in exactly the same form that you've just left it in the Mission Hub. Um, so all I really use this app for is as a kind of stepping stone between the Litchi Mission Hub and uh, Google Earth Pro uh, because this app actually lets you export in a, in a couple of different formats. Um, so what I'll be looking to do here is export it as a CSV. And that brings it straight into, um, into the Google Earth Pro. Uh, and if you look in your temporary places here, this is where it'll bring it in. Uh, it actually brings you a virtual mission based on the, the mission and the waypoints and all the parameters of those waypoints that you've just created in your Litchi Mission Hub. So if we just double click on this. Um, as I say, we've set the time of day already, so it's giving us an approximation of the lighting that we can expect at that time. Uh, and it'll actually fly the mission for you. Now I won't show it to you uh, in its entirety because it's a, um, a hyperlapse mission. Uh, this is all going to be very, very slow, so I'm scrubbing through it quite quickly, but it allows you to actually visualise and, and see your shot. Now, I can see, looking at this, that I've got a waypoint in the middle there that suddenly swings around and looks elsewhere, so that's something that I'm going to need to fix. So when I talked uh, at the beginning of this video about it being an iterative process, this is exactly what I mean. So uh, I'm looking at this, this it's like a previs, really, a 3D previs of, of my flight, uh, and I just need to check each of those waypoints to make sure that I'm 100% happy with where they're looking and, uh, and the altitude and the speed um, of each of those as I'm going through the mission. So I can see straight away that there's something that I need to fix there, uh, which is probably that second or third waypoint once we start that slow arc uh, watching the sun. So what I'll do is I'll just nip back into the mission hub, fix that up, uh, then we'll do the same process. We'll go via the virtual Litchi mission and export it as a CSV back to Google Earth Pro to see whether I've got a better result that I'm happier with. So back in the Litchi mission hub again, and we can see just as we follow this arc around here that we've got a bit of a heading issue with one of these waypoints in here. So this is why in our previs in Google Earth Pro we could see that the drone swung around to the left there when it should have been fixing on there where the sun was coming up in the east. So let's just uh, nip back in here and readjust our heading. You can be a lot more precise. I'm just doing this approximately, uh, working off the two waypoints either side. Uh, we can go back in here. We can save that again. There we go. Come out of there. Jump back into Litchi Mission. Again, for me, this is just a means of exporting it into Google Earth Pro. I don't do any rework or any adjustments to any of the, the waypoints or any missions here in Virtual Litchi Mission. I just feel a little bit more comfortable using the Litchi Mission Hub for that. So here we are. And if we look here, we can see that this waypoint here has now been fixed up. So let's just export that as a CSV back to Google Earth Pro. Back to temporary places, Virtual Mission. 
what we'll do is just bring that round to here again just going to need to bring that sun back on 6.30 in the morning, there we go we'll start playing from about there which is where the as you see this is moving very slowly but if we just click three or four times on here we probably get a slightly better approximation of of what it's going to look like now that looks a lot smoother a lot happier with the heading of each of those waypoints nice and smooth it's fixing on the sun as it comes around and then speeds back home so as i work sort of with the the various apps with the litchi mission hub um i'll you know i'll i'll, I'll plan my missions reasonably quickly just get the waypoints in get them approximately where I want them and looking in the right direction uh, the right altitude and the right speed but then iteratively as I say using the um, the virtual litchi mission and the Google Earth Pro just to run a few visualizations just to check that I'm happy with uh, with how the mission looks so here we have this is just the uh, screen recording that I took this morning when I flew this mission um, and I say the first part of the mission was really just to get the drone out to where I needed it so it, uh, it gets there quite quickly. It's a bit laggy. Um, so that just gives you an idea of, uh, of what we were looking at with the, with the, the sky and with the mist. And um, as I say, this was uh, for the main part of the mission that I needed the footage from. We were travelling at only about 2 k's an hour and we were shooting um, photos. Uh, on a JPEG setting at uh, every two seconds, so two second intervals uh, to hopefully give us a nice smooth result when we get it into post and start processing and seeing what we can do with the footage. So here we are in After Effects. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of an overview of uh, a very simple workflow that I've used here. It's very, very simple. I haven't done too much with this footage at all. Um, so first of all, uh, I brought it in as a JPEG sequence uh, straight off the card out of the drone and dropped it into uh, an image uh, into a composition. Uh, I do like to shoot image sequences at 4-3 aspect ratio rather than 16 by 9 uh, because it just gives me a little bit more latitude, a bit more real estate around the frame for, for framing my shots um, when I do bring them down to 16-9 aspect ratio. So all I've done here is brought it in and I've dropped a uh, warp stabilizer onto that um, just to stabilize that footage, just to smooth it out a little bit. Uh, then the stabilized footage I've pre-composed and that, again, there's no effects on that one at all. I've dropped straight into a composition. So this is the stabilized footage. Um, uh, I've just applied a few little bits and pieces to that to uh, enhance it. Uh, I threw on a reduce noise. Um, we played around with the levels. Uh, there we go, and uh, just uh, enhance some of the colours with a little bit of saturation, and that's really all that I've done there. Um, I did throw on a little vignette, uh, and although it's a little bit cheating, uh, I'd actually timed my flight a little bit too early before the sun really emerged as much as I wanted to, so just to emphasise that sun, we stuck a lens flare on there as well. Uh, and then uh, render all that out, um, uh, if I've got any editing to do, I will do the edit within Premiere Pro uh, and then I'll link that edit to After Effects through the dynamic link and work on the individual shots there. So um, in this, this particular workflow, there's no Premiere Pro. It wasn't needed because there's, there's no real edit. I'll just show you now some comparisons between the, the raw footage, uh, the unstabilized and then the final shot. Uh, and that really wraps up the workflow.